want to congratulate you on your show and let you know that you're doing a hell of a service for all of us. Man, you tell all them people out there, you tell everybody how it is, and it is just out of hand. I have a three-year-old son. Every time he's in the car, he listens to you, and we're going to bring him up the Tom way. You know what? You're very funny. I like you because, you know, you, 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 I like you. Why do you have a girlfriend? Well, I let her know how it is. So I how is it? Uh, let me know how it is. Yeah. How is it? Yeah. It is just out of hand. God bless you, Tom. Do you miss having a newspaper? Not. The only thing that it was good for is putting in the bottom of my snake tank. I'm here in front of a taco stand right now. Me da este tres de birria, por favor. I'm going to eat some tacos right now, Tom. I'm going to eat a couple for you. Thank you. I, You know what? I'm on the air. I would love to be there with you having some. Tell you what. Con todo, por favor. Tell me what kind you would eat, man, and I'll eat them for you. Oh, carne asada, baby. Carne asada. Hot as, it, as hot as it comes. Y me da este otro dos de carne asada, con todo. For all the boys out there listening, preen up, preen up, preen up. Can't say it enough. Or don't get married. Or don't get married, but if you do, <laughs> so it's outrageous. <laughs> How many people watching the NBA playoffs are actually going to watch Lipstick Jungle or Desperate Housewives? Just because somebody likes watching Tony Parker doesn't mean they like watching Eva Longoria, okay? But you know, it becomes really apparent that every show on ABC is a vagina fest. I mean, ABC is the Vagina Network. <laughs> ABC, you know what that stands for? It's not always be closing. It's always be something else. When they do promo saying, see you next Tuesday, you pretty much know where they're coming from. What are you paying cable a month, like at your sweet places? Oh, <laughs> you don't want to know what I pay because uh, I have satellite. I have uh, direct TV. Right. But there is a secret society of DirecTV where you can pay one price. Okay. And it is now up to, in the five digits, you pay $10,000 a year. Jesus. And you get every channel there is. They've, there's like 850 channels, I found out. Dude, Tom, I'm at my house and I'm reading books. I'm like looking at bugs in the, in the lawn. Oh, my God. What did you do, get a library card now to oh, save I money? I hit the library. I'm with, I'm with all the homeless people at the library every week now. <laughs> Dude, I rent DVDs from the library now. That's what the economy is doing to me. What do you look like? Uh, you know I couldn't listen to your show for this many years if I wasn't a hot bitch, right? That's absolutely, you know what, that's absolutely true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving this U-Haul right now in a bikini top. Let's just put it that way. Really? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, well, well. The heat wave, you know, I can serve by not wearing as much clothes as well. I might have to do a credit check. <laughs> I need to get a good look at your credit report. <laughs> Okay, we can do that. We can Absolutely. Wait. I want to see what your FICO score is. Yes. I'm going to scrutinize your credit very closely. You can scrutinize my credit all you want. <laughs> You're just an absurd, unprofessional guy oh, that... I'm unprofessional? The radio. Well, if I'm unprofessional, how did I become the number one broadcaster in Southern yeah, California? How did, I, how did I do that? Only stupid Mexican people that have no life. Stupid Mexican you. people. Well, are, 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 are you listening to? I, what does that make you? Yeah, it just been, yeah, I'm not a Mexican. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, I'm you're just stupid. Like no, actually, I'm not stupid. Well, so. you just said the. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I, Let's use geometric logic. Okay. For, first of all, you said only stupid Mexicans listen to me. That's that's number one. Number two, you said that uh, you're not Mexican. Mexican. So that means you either are, as you say, these are your words, you're either a stupid Mexican, or maybe it's just stupid people listen. Some of them happen to be Mexican, and some of them happen to be you. Time to stop being married, Stephen. That's another way you can cut back during the recession. That's true. That's another way to, to, uh, to save money there, is to, to ditch the wife. That's, uh, yeah, and it's also a good way to lose 180 pounds of ugly fat. <laughs> Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> Whoa, okay. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really 
really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio on another Friday on the Tom Likas Show. It is insufferably hot here in Southern California. When I came in here today, it was 97 degrees. 97. Yikes! That's a hot day. That is a hot goddamn day. So what was I doing while I was doing the show open this summer? Pouring some hot coffee. Our engineer, Art Webb, also doubles as our uh, barista. That's right. That's, <laughs> that's, part of the t- that's part of the job. <laughs> Editing digital content. Brewing coffee. Environmental concerns. I'll be checking Art's carbon footprint tonight about 645. (laughs) Art's going green all the time. Every day he's going green. That's right. Anyway, uh, we are just three weeks away from the beginning of Flash Friday. And I have promised you I'm going to be here all summer long. So I'm going to be here overseeing Flash Friday live every Friday. And I'm looking forward to it. Friday, June 6th is going to be the first Flash Friday. Hopefully you will be here for that. And even if you're not listening, you'll know it's Friday. (laughs) You will look around the freeways and you will see all the lights on. You will know. Looking forward to that. We had quite a week here on the Tom Likas Show. Uh, today, wide open telephones. You can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the year this week. This week on the show, we talked about uh, a bar in Marietta, Georgia. And the owner, a guy named Mike Norman, we had him on the show. He was selling uh, T-shirts with uh, pictures of Curious George, the monkey. And a line under the picture of Curious George said, Obama in 08. By the way, he sold out of shirts. Uh, we, uh, we didn't do this as a topic per se, but we did uh, take a look at uh, that news promo from New York. And you can see it on our MySpace page, myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. You heard this a few times this week. Uh, the person you're hearing is named Sue Simmons. And she has been the anchor woman on Channel 4 News in New York for 35 years. But what is amazing is 35 years on the air. It doesn't matter how many years you're on the air. People still do things like this promo. At 11 pay more at the grocer, but getting less will tell you how to get the most. The f*** are you doing? <laughs> Followed by the obligatory apology, which uh, theoretically the apology. And think about this. I thought the FCC had a zero tolerance policy. I didn't think you'd just come on and apologize. Because if you could just come on and apologize, I'm going to say the F word every day. Then when I'm done saying it, I'm going to say, I am so sorry. See, here's the obligatory and superfluous apology. Because theoretically, the FCC is not sitting there going, Oh, well, if she's sorry, we're not going to find WNBC TV. But uh, here is uh, here is the obligatory apology. I need to acknowledge an unfortunate mistake that I made and one of the teases we bring to you before this program. While we were live just after 10 o'clock, I said a word that many people find offensive. I'm truly sorry. It was a mistake on my part, and I sincerely apologize. Yeah. (laughs) 35 years. I saw her first day on the air in New York 35 years ago. 
And uh, there, by the way, uh, at one time, this woman had the largest breasts of anybody on television. I think she had breast reduction surgery over the years. I do. But here she is, 35 years later, she's still saying the F word on TV, live. Totally amazing. So if you want to see that video in all its glory, go to our MySpace page and take a look. You'll also see the two uh, Bill O'Reilly videos. And the long-lost Flintstones cartoon. Yeah, you'll find uh, unbelievable. When the Flintstones was a new show on network TV in 1961, you'd be amazed who one of their sponsors was. So it's all at our MySpace page, myspace.com slash Tom Likas, myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Go take a look. No one has been taking out Bill O'Reilly's style. You're absolutely right. Uh, Gary, I'm amazed. You would think somebody would have asked for this. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F- it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Uh, F***ing thing sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Does, doesn't, I'm, I'm not kidding about this. On his show on Fox News, isn't he always commenting on people who use vulgarity? He wrote a book for kids called the, what was it called, The Kid Factor or something like that? I mean, (laughs) there's the real Bill O'Reilly. It's the real deal. So you can see that whole video, the the entire video, that's just a clip from it. Because he goes on. (laughs) Unedited on our MySpace page. We can't play the unedited version here, but you can see it at myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. And then uh, somebody uh, very creative in the YouTube community uh, did a dance remix of that, if you can imagine it. It's a great video. And as I said yesterday, nothing on television tonight will be funnier than this video. Nothing. It's good stuff. Also this week on the program, we talked about surveys that show, these are scientific studies, uh, that happiness plummets with the arrival of each child. Sure, you're happily married. Oh, you're blissful. Tell the kids come. And the scientists say you then become miserable, and you stay miserable until the kids leave home. That's right. People hated that, but it's true. We talked about the fact that newspapers are dead, that the only people reading newspapers nowadays are people over 45 or 50 years old. That's it. Are there exceptions to the rule? There are exceptions to every rule. So what? Circulation of newspapers is plummeting because people under 50 are getting their news from the Internet and other sources. I myself read the L.A. Times on my telephone, and I pay nothing for it. So why in the world would anybody subscribe to a newspaper? We talked about that. We had in the studio a guest from the National Coalition of Free Men. We talked about the male victims of domestic violence this week. John Cleese of Monty Python getting a divorce. He's paying, uh, what is he paying? It's uh, $15,000 a month. 180000 is it 15000 a month? No, it's more than 150000 a month. It's $1.8 million a year. That's what it was. I'm confused because they had the amount in pounds and euros in in the story, but it was dollars. It's about one point five or one point eight million dollars a year he's paying, and he said it's worth it. It's worth every penny. We talked about that, and uh, we talked about how uh, a network programming executive from one of the major TV networks said that uh, strong women are in this year. Women drive network television. That's what she said. (laughs) And, of course, they're driving all the young men away from watching. But there you go. We talked about the uh, CEO of Miller Beer, Miller Brewing Company. Says beer drinkers are trading down to cheaper beers. They're trading down for the expensive brews, and they're drinking more of that Miller High Life and other lower-priced brews. And we've already seen this happen with Starbucks and coffee, and now we're seeing it with beer. And we talked about the L.A. controversy over the taco trucks, the roach coaches, uh, the uh, 
County of Los Angeles is uh, trying to put uh, the brakes on all these taco trucks that are out there. And uh, Thursday they had a big protest here in town, and uh, Dean, to show his support, uh, went and patronized a taco truck along with Art. And Dean came to my front door and delivered a giant carne asada burrito. This thing had to weigh four pounds. It was huge and super cheap. It was fantastic. Six bucks for this thing. I'm telling you, it weighed a ton. And that meat was outrageous. And that was hot. And it was good. So there you go. So those are just some of the things we talked about on the program this week. And you can talk about any of those. You can talk about anything we didn't get to this week. Again this week, no talk about the presidential race. I think people are bored. I think the thing has taken too long. I think people have uh, lost all their early enthusiasm, which will be bad news for Barack Obama because the very elderly people who will vote for John McCain, they don't have much else to live for anymore other than the election and going to the voting booth in November. That's one of the few times this year the uh, elderly will get to talk to somebody. And uh, Yes, Tom, I'll be voting in November. Uh so uh, because this process takes so long, I think they've bored all the formerly enthusiastic young voters who are all going to go out to the polls and support Obama. I think most of them have gone to sleep and don't care anymore. So we will see if uh, Obama can actually get votes in November or if everybody has moved on to something else, like Grand Theft Auto 4 or whatever they've moved on to. Seriously. Very big day in the 90069. Oh, and a big day in the 90069. Is Dean finally uh, camping out in his apartment? Oh, gay marriage. That's right. I thought Dean had moved to his apartment already. I thought maybe he rolled out the air mattress and uh, just uh, kind of stretched out. And gay marriage. Absolutely. It's all here. We can talk about it all. All you have to do is call us here toll free at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. All you have to do is be absolutely fascinating. Or Dean, in the process of calling starving students or load, lock, and roll or whatever, uh, Dean will hang up on you. And in the process of moving, he may be extra cranky. So this is your opportunity to get on the air and dazzle all of us. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. I think you are the foulest piece of excuse of a human being. Good, I'm glad you feel that way. telling our youth, our young people of America, that they should be treating women like jerks. Yes, and, uh, they should. I feel very sorry for you. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Uh, 1 800 5 800 Tom. We are three weeks away from the first Flash Friday. Three weeks from today, June 6th, mark it down. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. It's Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, my brother? Doing okay, Kevin. All right, man, it's so good to talk to you. Uh, this has been a wacky week here in L.A., man. We started off almost needed jackets at the beginning of the week. Now we can almost go with a clothes off right now. I did, as a matter of fact. Yeah. You yeah, know? I rolled in here naked today. What the hell? You, you almost have to. You know? Yeah. As, as hot as it, as it is. Hey, Tom, I want to tell you, great picture in the L.A. Weekly of you today. I mean, I picked up the L.A. Weekly today. Great picture. Have you seen the picture? Did they run an ad for the show? Oh, uh, just a whole page, bro. Whole man. I'm really? Back, uh, That's I'm nice. <laughs> you know what's weird about that ad? They don't. They're afraid to tell you what the show is about. You notice the ad doesn't tell you what this show is. It says Tom Likas and gives your time. That's it. Right. Well, so what? I mean, Tom, what does Tom Likas do? Right. I, I'm not so egotistical to believe that everybody who reads the paper knows who I am. No. It should say what the show does. Right, right. You know, hoes, bitches. It should say it right in there. Yeah. And, and, and Tom, have you ever seen this uh, Miller uh, Beer Company of the uh, Truck of the Lycats? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. it's all over town. Yeah, I seen that today. I was trying to get a picture of that today. Uh, I'm a driver for Smart and Final, and he pulled into the lot, and I've been trying to get a picture of myself right in front of the girls. Great picture there, man. Great picture to like it. Yeah, the like cats all over town. There's a, they're bigger than life. Right on the west side is a brewery company on the west side of um, of, um, of of Los Angeles. I was up in uh, West Hollywood today, but I was working. There we so, go. Yeah, did, working did you see? Today. Did you see Dean with his uh, hand truck? <laughs> uh, oh man, I seen a guy today. He was about as big as Shaq with heels on. I'm <laughs> like Jesus Christ. These cats up here don't even try to like. Uh, you know, fix themselves in it up anymore. You know? <laughs> hey, but tell them, I want to talk to you about the economy. Uh, to you know, um, I asked a couple of guys to work today. Are they feeling it? To I'm a single guy. Uh, I have one kid. Pay my child support on time. Um, I drive an SUV. Um, I'm really not feeling it the way most people are. I guess you know, I'm still running my two. Uh, TVs up. Uh, I don't have a plasma. But I got LCD. I uh -huh. run two of them side by side, and I'm run, still running. And got to be in high def. I couldn't yeah. ever see myself. Matter of fact, my eyes go bad if I don't watch. Like I, you know, you ever see these uh, commercials on TV? They tell you the TV is going all digital in 2009. Right. And do you ever think to yourself, can you imagine what low rent people are out there getting their coupons? To, to make to get that box to make the TV work with digital TV, right? You know. Like, what I mean, who doesn't uh, have their hands on a flat screen or uh, you know some kind of a decent TV by now, and, and, and or satellite? You know, if you have satellite or digital cable, it doesn't affect you. So, who are these people? These are the lowest of the low, right? Right. You know, coming into Best Buy with their coupons, yeah. and need a yeah. box. So my Admiral uh, color TV will still work. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom, I don't know if this has been a slap in the face. I've been told by some of my girlfriends I live a life of a rich man without the money. I don't know if that was a compliment. Or it, it depends. It depends on if you're broke and you're in debt. You know. Well, you know, because I tell the girls, you know, uh, you know, this is how it is when you walk in the house. Now, if you use your chance, walk out the door. You know. But, you know, I yeah, can't. well, how you spend your money is none of her business. Right, you know, right, you know, and um, uh, there's your you perfect know. opportunity. I love when women give me an ultimatum. That's my favorite. Because mm -hmm. what they don't understand is I've been looking for a way out all this time. Mm. The minute they tell me, if you don't do what I say, I'm going to leave you. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Don't so let the door you, hit you in the rump on the way out, sweetheart. Uh, hey, tell me, you guys going up to the new place uh, for um, for uh, next weekend? Uh, don't know where I'm going to be next weekend yet. I can tell you, though, that I am having uh, the big 4th of July party for all my friends. 4th uh, of July is on a Friday this year, so uh, I've got 20 acres. I'm telling everyone to bring up uh, tents. They can all pitch a tent. Yeah. You live off the off the 154 outside of the Santa Barbara, right? I live north of Santa Barbara. Yeah. Yeah. You, can you imagine driving a big rig through there? I drive a big truck, and I don't know if you noticed the sign up in there. It's posted now. It says no uh, big rigs, but we used to use that as a shortcut to uh, go up to uh, Santa Maria. And you know that big bridge that you have to cross? Yeah. One time I went across it, and you, you know it snows up there. I know. Right? I had to grab the twins one time. I went across there, and I know what black ice looks like because I'm from back east. <laughs> and and that was black ice up there, you know, <laughs> and stuff, you know. So I know. And, and I want to tell you, you know, I know sometimes, Tom, you like to stop into your favorite uh, wholesale store and, um, you know, and look in the freezer there. Yes, so I do. When you're, when you're on your way up there. There's a smart final right off the freeway, a uh, quick off and on in Santa Barbara. So look it up. Oh. And uh, uh, smart final has been getting some great prices on liquor lately. And, I'm a big uh, fan of smart. And, I'm a, I'm a big fan of smart and final. Gary and no, Gary used to live around the corner for smart and final. It's hey, fantastic. He's on the 405. I'm on the South 405. Coming up. Uh, excuse me, North 405. On um, coming up on the 605. That's one of Tom's son and big smart final truck there. As a matter of fact, let me roll down the window and scare ten people. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I just called that there. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Look at you. Yeah, you know, I'm out here. I'm going to go home and uh, service the uh, the lady. Uh -huh. off of work. Yeah, yeah. And if she doesn't like, uh, doesn't like the way you're spending your money, guess what? There's a newer, hotter model out there waiting for you. Tom Like It. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 Like this. In this day and age, for a man to get married, he's only looking to lose. It's the Tom Like It Show. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Thank you for tuning in. It's Robin on the Tom Likas Show. Robin is listening to the online stream in Flensburg, Germany. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey, Tom. I'm a big fan. Uh, I got pointed to you at a, at a good friend at a... <laughs> at a university in Washington State, a good friend of mine named Preston, he turned me on to the show. And uh, at first I was kind of appalled and I was wondering what it was all about. But uh, by now I love it. I listen to the podcast pretty much every day on the way to school, on the way to school, uh, from school to home and uh, on the way to work. Really, really love this. And um, there was one thing that I wanted to, to talk about uh, that you had already on the show, and that was helping women. Um, I was going to uh, a class trip once, a senior class trip to Italy, and it was it was great. I mean, the transportation sucked because we had to do it all the the cheap way. We had to change trains and get on a plane and get on another train and whatnot. But everybody was really excited. And uh, as you just say, you know, uh, you should never help a woman. So there we were sitting in a train. This was about like eight hours into a journey. I was really exhausted because it was hot. And, uh, I mean, you've been to Italy. You know what it's like. Oh, yeah. And uh, there was a girl, and she had this idiotic suitcase. It had uh, wheels on it that broke almost 20 minutes into the journey. It was heavy as, um, heavy as uh, I, I guess I can't say that on the show, but it was, really, it was a really heavy suitcase. And every time we came to a set of stairs, she kind of expected somebody else to pick it up. And in the beginning, I was so excited. I was like, yeah, let me help it. I'm, I'm so excited. I'll, I'll do anything. And uh, so eight hours into the trip, we were sitting in a train. We just got onto it, and she asked if I could put her heavy suitcase on uh, this kind of storage space that was up on the, the upper level of the train. I was like, no, I'm exhausted. I just want to sit. I'm not doing anything anymore. I've, I've had enough of it. And then suddenly she, she starts to complain and talk to me about what kind of a bad person I am and how it's kind of like my responsibility to help her and whatnot. And uh, I was just so, so, uh, I was so surprised. And then later on, I thought about what you said, that women always take, 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 and they never get back. They, they never give you back anything for that. So after carrying her suitcase around all day, uh, she yelled and screamed and complained that I wouldn't do it one more time. And I, I, just, I just didn't know what to say. I was, I was so shocked. Say that she did not appreciate that you had already done her more than one favor. Yeah. And I mean, I, I wasn't even responsible. I, I wasn't even, uh, I didn't even have to do that. It was me being nice. And then I stopped being nice and suddenly I'm the bad guy. So I don't know what's going on. But the only thing I learned from that is that just never to help anybody. Never else be anymore. nice to never. women. Never help them lift anything. Never, yeah. ever, ever. Uh, women are equal. They demand equality. Sure. And uh, I'm the original, I'm the world's original feminist. I say, great, lift your own goddamn suitcase. Yeah. I mean, why not? It's all this, this kind of uh, political correctness that, that doesn't get you anywhere. It only creates problems, Tom, and I don't know what to say. Um, there's one more question that I have, and uh, I'm coming back to the States because I was in the States um, as an exchange student some time ago, and I'm coming back just for, the, uh, for the 4th of July. And I'm wondering, you know, me being a foreign guy, what kind of uh, maybe extra advantage do I have to pick up chicks? Or what is the kind of the, the special secret to, to dating uh, American chicks when you're from a foreign country? Well, I mean, just, just the fact that you speak another language, that you have an accent speaking English, that's all helpful. Uh, chicks are all over that. They love that. Great. I mean, that um, yeah, you're in. Damn, I can't. I can't wait because I mean, um, if you if you're in Germany and you're trying to get laid, it's always sooner or later ending up in this kind of relationship status that you you just don't want to because. Um, Girls in Germany, they're kind of prudes, and I mean, usually you think of America as the prude country, but in, in terms of relationships, it's, it's, it's really otherwise. You sleep with a girl maybe once or twice, and uh, the next thing you know, she's, she's texting you about going shopping and whatnot, and that's kind of scary. So just being a foreign guy, I just, you know, 
being myself, I should get laid. Oh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Plus, chicks have this whole thing about, like, they, they don't want to be appear to be sluts. But if you're just in town for a short period of time and you have an accent, all that stuff goes out the window. Great. <laughs> so if I were you, I'd play it for whatever it's worth. I, yeah, that, that I, was I like about... That's like what I had when I went to Columbia. I yeah. couldn't believe all the hot chicks who were like all over me in Colombia. It was crazy. Yeah, and I mean, I'm I'm honest. I'm not a perfect ten. I mean, I'm not a male model, some kind of David Beckham or whatnot. I'm kind of uh, well, maybe a five or whatnot. So I guess that that should push me over the top because I mean, uh, that should just help. And then claiming to have money is uh, always a good idea too. Oh, absolutely, and, uh, absolutely. Maybe... You are here because you're on business. Sure. You're not a student. Uh, you are an executive with. Pick the name of any German company, okay? Uh, Al ben. Audi. Yeah. It's a name chicks would know. Yeah. You're the CEO of Audi. <laughs> that should work. By the time they figure out that you're not, you've already boned them. Yeah. I mean, other than that, that's, I guess, all that I'm... Well, I want to visit, visit my friends, of course, but uh, I guess I come from the friends on the post, and that's it. <laughs> that's exactly right. Well, Mr. Tom Likus, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for providing uh, entertainment pretty much all day long. And uh, can you take me out with the old lady? I... You know, the, the old lady voice that you do. Well, uh... Yes, I certainly can. Thank you so much for calling. one 800 tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Mark. Mark is listening to us online in Sacramento on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, thank you for taking my call. I do it as I a just, public service, Mark. Yes, you do, and you should charge well for it, I hope. Uh, a quick list here. Uh, first off, that Bernie Ward. <laughs> Speaking of Sacramento. Yeah, I got a hoot out of Dean calling him up, and he respects <laughs> you so much. The guy's looking for any friend in the world. Heck, he'd even take you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what a hoot. That's right. Exactly. He went, on, he went on one time about how that Joycelyn Elders, the old Surgeon General, yeah. was saying that guy, guys and girls ought to get together and masturbate each other. And he was thinking that was a good idea, and I called him and told him, you let me do that to any girl, any girl do it to me, I'm having sex with her. And your daughter, I don't care who. Well, apparently it his, happened. apparently uh, it's his son that he's had his eye on. Oh, don't even go there. I'm not kidding, dude. You go to the smoking gun and read the transcripts of the, uh, Bernie, of the chats. I'm not making that up. I did. I went to the smoking gun, read it all. So you've so, seen ooh, when he was talking yeah, about his yeah. son being 13 and... Uh, yeah, and uh, looking at his daughters. Looking robust, that, yeah. That sick stuff and him going to the movie houses and having uh, gay sex. Oh, yeah, I read it all. Is anybody surprised this guy was once in a seminary? Oh, yeah. That doesn't surprise me a bit. That's they, so you know how they spell that. seminary? S-E-M-E-N... A R Y. All that. <laughs> the but, rectory. That's right. Tom, uh, about the marriage bit you talked about, you are so right. I'm 22 years married, and the only reason why I'm happy is because that's the only happiness I know. And, and my suggestion to these single guys you talk to is go get your sperm frozen and go down and get a vasectomy. If I knew how simple and easy and cheap and painless it ha was to have a vasectomy, I don't think I'd have the two children I got today. Look at this. Look at this. Love them and all. But <laughs> I, I tried to raise them right, and I got a daughter who is off the deep end, and I don't know where I went wrong, and I tried everything. Really? What's her number? Oh, God. <laughs> hey, I got her. I made her listen to your show, hoping to straighten her out. Yeah. Bring her over here. I'll straighten her out. Oh, she might need it. But uh, a <laughs> couple more years. A couple more years. Bernie Ward will straighten out your son. I'll straighten out your daughter. Yeah, well, the boy's in good shape. But, oh, okay. Uh, Pat Peeves here, Tom. I, I, went, I would never uh, pretend to uh, know what you're doing in the radio business, but your spiel the other day on the uh, guy who wouldn't turn his radio off. That was classic. They ought to put that in the radio archives. 
<laughs> and, and, and these callers that call up and 10 callers in a row ask you how you're doing, what is up with that? You ought to spend their entire time telling you all about your day and your week and the last two weeks. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Why do they do that? They're killing time. It's called a filibuster. They get on the air, and they're not ready to talk yet. That's right. that's like another way of clearing your throat. When someone turns on the microphone and goes, <coughs> Oh, man. <coughs> Testing. Is this on? <laughs> one, two, one, two. <laughs> when they say, how are you, they're just... Like trying to adjust and trying to acclimate. Oh man! And and about the podcast, I podcast you the, the the blazes out of you, and I understand you're in the advertising business, and I don't get no commercials. What's up with that? I I don't know. We better call the sales department and get them on the stick. For God's sake! Thanks a lot. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones. Hello. Mr. Likas, how are you doing? Doing great. I know the caller just said not to ask you that, so I did it anyways. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, anyways, I know that you're uh, always talking to these East Coast guys, and you know just as well as I do that anytime you argue with someone about between East Coast and West Coast and which one's better, sports is going to get thrown into the mix. Right. And just about a week or two ago, me and my brother found out a fun little fact. The number one grossing sports franchise of all is not the New York Yankees. It's not Manchester United. It is, in fact, the Los Angeles Dodgers. That's interesting. Yeah. Is, uh, and they always say, you know, East Coast is where the sports is at. But no, how can that be possible? Well, of course it's possible uh, because uh, for years the Los Angeles Dodgers – in most years, have had higher attendance than the New York Yankees. It's a fact. You can look it up, and it's a fact. Yes, that just results all into good fans, you know. And the new stadium they're building for the Yankees that opens next spring uh, will have a smaller capacity than the current Yankee stadium. So the uh, difference between the Dodgers and the Yankees will widen. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. Uh, the Dodgers are a much more successful business enterprise over the course of time. True, but I mean, I'm just saying it also results in good fans. I mean, that wouldn't be possible if we didn't have really good fans and not just a bunch of fans. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And and believe you me, 10 years ago, George Steinbrenner was threatening to move the Yankees to New Jersey or elsewhere uh, because he wanted a new stadium and people were not coming to Yankee Stadium. Yeah, yeah. Of course, the reason they were not coming to Yankee Stadium uh, was uh, in the mid-90s, there was a period when the Yankees really stunk. And uh, New York is no different from any place else. When the Yankees stunk, people stopped coming. In fact, I'll tell you what, the Dodgers have stunk a lot of years, and people have continued to go to the games. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a staple of our community. I mean, everyone loves the Dodgers out here through thick and thin. But you talk to any Yankees fan, and sure enough, halfway through the season, by all-star break, that little black cap will be right off their heads, and they won't even support them anymore. Right. Uh, and, and, well, I, and by the way, the New York fans love lording it over the L.A. fans and saying how how we all leave games early. Yeah. And uh, in uh, March, the L.A. Kings played uh, the uh, New York Rangers at Madison Square Garden for the first time in four years. Wow. And I went with my brother and my nephew, my sister-in-law. We all went to the game. And the Kings just, you know, they had a lousy season this year, but they whacked the Rangers. It was something like five to two, and uh, the New York fans were, were were leaving in droves, in droves. That place was half empty halfway but, uh, through the third period of that game. So, uh, they, you know, uh, uh, again, the New Yorkers just like to talk. They're a lot of hot air. They love to hear themselves talk. Yeah, and uh, we're all sick of it. Uh, we're all sick of hearing them talk. For Christ's sake. Hey, thanks a lot for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Don't forget our MySpace page. It's MySpace.com slash Tom Likas. MySpace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. See the Bill O'Reilly videos there? And, of course, BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.